Hello viewers, 4 DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how to port and polish a small engine butterfly style carburetor. In this tutorial, I'll also include how to port the intake manifold as well. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.4diyers.com or click on the link in the description below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it as well as subscribe to my channel for future tutorial videos. This carburetor and intake manifold I'm working with here today is from a 4 horsepower engine. The carburetor and intake manifold must be removed from the engine in order to do this procedure. Also, it is best to clean the carburetor and intake manifold before porting and polishing process begins, as we don't want any contaminants. Keep the carburetor disassembled as well, as we will be cleaning it afterwards when we're finished modifying it. If you're wondering how to clean the carburetor, please check out my tutorial on that in the description below. Taking it a step further from the cleaning process disassembly, we will also be removing the choke and throttle butterflies. Work in a safe location so we don't risk losing any small parts. The advantages of polishing porting a carburetor and an intake manifold will increase the performance and efficiency of the engine along with increasing throttle response. The ports can be matched poorly, therefore causing restrictions in the intake path. Any rough casting finishes will cause turbulence in the intake flow, which will greatly reduce the efficiency when the air and fuel mixes, therefore decreasing performance in the end. Remove the small standard screw on a butterfly plate, then remove the plate out and slide the shaft out. Be sure to check the orientation of the plates and shafts, as some will only go in in one direction. You may or may not have a small spring attached to the throttle plate, so pay attention to how that is held in as well. First starting with the choke side, normally this isn't a critical side as we don't have to worry about the idle being affected such as the throttle plate area, which I'll explain more when we move on to that component. As you can see we're starting with a fairly rough casting. It is best to wet sand the unit as it keeps the dust down and we can achieve a higher finish. Only use wet, dry, compatible sandpaper. Start with 220 first, be sure to always pre-soak the sandpaper. Always rinse the area off after any excessive sanding material has been built up. Next move on to 400 grit. Again the same process, pre-soak the sandpaper, then keep the area well lubricated with the water, rinse away any excessive amount of sanding material buildup. Once satisfied, move up to 600. Next, using 1000, 1500 grit, and finally finishing up with 2000 grit sandpaper. This next step doesn't apply to all carburetors unfortunately, as it will depend how your air filter side is designed. With this particular setup, I'm able to flare out the opening to allow more airflow. Safety glasses are needed for this process. Use a rotary tool such as a Dremel with a coarser stone. This will cut back the aluminum material fairly fast and efficiently. Considering this is aluminum, it will plug up the stone very fast. Therefore, we need some form of cutting or penetrating oil to keep the stone clean. There is no need to cut at an extremely fast speed either, so the oil doesn't spray everywhere along with the shavings. Wipe away any excessive material buildup when needed and keep applying the cutting or penetrating oil when needed. Once we are satisfied with the flared opening, wipe it down to remove any oil or debris and then move on to an 80 grit drum sander. Unfortunately, we can't wet the surface to keep the dust down, so I would highly recommend wearing a mask. Ensure the opening is nicely rounded. Move on to the same process as previously. Wet sand with 220, 400, 600, 1000, 1500, and then finally 2000. For the throttle plate side, we can match the ports up between the carburetor opening and the intake manifold. This is done by using the gasket, lining up the bolt holes, and then using a paint marker to outline the opening. Next take the same gasket and do the same on the intake manifold. Now for this particular model, the ports are matched very well, so there really isn't a need to cut away any material. But if you find yours isn't matched very well, using the same process to flare out the carburetor opening, first rough out the opening with a grinding stone, then move up to an 80 grit drum sander and finish up wet sanding with 220, 400, 600, 1000, 1500 and then finally 2000. But do not grind away any portion where the throttle plate contacts. As for cleaning out the bore on the throttle plate side, this is normally a machine surface, therefore it already does have a fairly smooth surface. With that being said, you will only need to clean the surface up with 2000 grit wet sanding paper. But this may vary between models, so you may want to start out with 1500 wet sanding first. We do not want to start out with anything coarser, as it can affect the idle speed of the engine, and therefore the throttle plate may not have enough adjustment to lower that speed down. Therefore only smoothen and polish the surface, do not bore out this side of the carburetor. You will notice there is a venturi deeper inside the throat, about halfway between the throttle plate and choke plate on this particular model. I haven't modified too much of it, as it's very hard to reach inside. It can be lightly sanded to remove any imperfections, usually working with 400 to start out with, then move up to 600, 1000, 1500, and finally 2000. We don't want to alter this portion too much, as it can affect the accuracy of its operation. Once you're satisfied with both sides, ensure there is no shavings or sanding debris left over, and move on to the polishing compound. Here I'm using a metal polish by Eagle One. This can be done by hand or using a rotary tool. I'm using a Dremel with a felt polishing wheel. Apply the metal polish to the felt wheel and work it into the surface. 
If you are using this particular metal polish, you will find that it starts out being white and then goes to black. Remove any excessive polish with a clean cloth and reapply more if needed. You should be left with a mere finish in the end. Finally, we can finish up with polishing the shafts and plates. The shafts on this particular model are made out of brass, so they are fairly easy to work with. Wet sand them down to remove any baked on debris and to smoothen out the surface. As for the plates, one is made of brass and the other is of steel. The steel tends to be a little harder to work with than compared to polishing brass, so you can start out using a 1500 grit wet sand paper and then work up to 2000. As for the brass plate, 2000 is fine. Then polish the shafts and plate using the metal polish. In this situation, I've done this by hand, but you can use a rotary tool. Now we can move on to the intake manifold. First we can start by port matching it to the carburetor if we haven't done that already. Then using the same procedure with the gasket, same as what I mentioned earlier in the video, match the port using the bolt holes onto the engine block, but do not touch the engine block specifically. Use a grinding stone to rough out the opening, then insert it deeper into the intake manifold removing any of the rough casting. Don't get too carried away with removing an extreme amount of material, as some intake manifolds may have thinner walls and we don't want to grind through it. Once you are satisfied, finish up with an 80 grit drum sander and we're done. Some intake manifolds may have an awkward shape, such as this one, so try to do the best to get inside. Normally you can use ball hones, if you wish, to get deeper inside the intake runners as they're able to go around curves. Intake manifolds do not need a highly polished surface as it can cause fuel atomization issues and fuel pooling. The 80 grit sanded surface allows for the fuel and air to mix properly. As a final step, clean the intake manifold and carburetor. This will remove any excessive polish that could have plugged up any of the orifices or shavings from grinding or sanding debris. Use a carburetor specific cleaner. If you want to know how to clean a carburetor, again, as I mentioned before, there is a link in the description below for a tutorial on that. If you've polished the carburetor correctly, the carb cleaner will not affect the highly polished surface. Finally, reassemble the unit. When reinstalling the screws back into the throttle and choke plates, I would highly recommend using a thread locker. Here I'll be using a blue medium strength thread locker made by Permatex. Engines will suffer from vibrations, therefore this will reduce the risk of the screws loosening up over time. This product will also protect the threads from any corrosion and can be removed easily afterwards with any hand tools if needed. We do not want to risk the screws being sucked up by the intake as this can cause internal engine damage. This concludes the rest of my tutorial video. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to post them below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Thank you for watching.